Why does the Bitcoin price move so much? Well, it's a smaller market than in other currencies, other currencies. So the depth isn't as big. So when you get changes, you get more volatile changes in surges of demand. So that means you get kind of, it's like a bumpier ride for an aeroplane. There's a real amount of lift and then the occasional air pockets, etc. It's not as stable and as well bidded up and asked and so much depth in the ladder, as I like to call it. You know, the ladder is the, the buying bid stack with the best bid and then the ask and all the asks getting ever higher there. There's not that same level of depth. So there's an inherent volatility and also the fact that there's more money coming in. So it's expanding in terms of its scale, it's doubling. As I mentioned, you know, you went from 1 billion to 20 billion to 100 billion. That is a highly volatile, highly expansionary um, market, which you're just not getting 20 times and then five times again in the first six months of this year in any other industry uh, or, uh, or asset class, if we were to call crypto an asset class. It's expansionary, and that's why the price changes so much. So there is the opinion that Bitcoin is not in strong hands, that everyone who buys it is just in for a short ride. Is this your view? I think less and less uh, that's the case. There may be, there are certainly speculators. Where any, wherever there is something that has made great gains, you will have the sizzle uh, and the interest of speculators. It's human nature. You know, every gold has a gold rush, um, and you will have the same here. However, the technology, when you talk about blockchain and uh, the, the whole concepts of the fintech, um, that's not going away. There's a real foundation. Um, that's been laid there. So I think it, there'll be a lot of flightiness in the capital of some of it, especially where it involves emotive responses of retail people. But at an institutional level, at an investor level, that money is permanent and it's there to stay and it's getting bigger and it's growing. Um, so I, I don't think there's great validity to that statement and I think it's losing further validity as time passes. Is it possible to day trade in cryptocurrencies? Lots of things can sometimes be categorized as possible. It doesn't necessarily mean it's advisable. Yeah. Um, and that's my take on that. Um, everybody's a great day trader in a bull market. Why? Because generally they net long and they happen to have been in it. The truth be told, if you analyze their P&L and had chosen the three best selected fundamentally and put them in a buy and hold only strategy, most of them would have underperformed. And the minute uh, the tide goes out, the emperor has no clothes. A the minute there's, there's understanding of how to shorten a market, people, far less people are good at exercising short strategies or, or getting out or recognizing when to get out. As an example, we rode Ripple up very, very strongly, which is the, the one that is very tied to banks. And then we saw our inverted setup that said it was going to underperform relative to Bitcoin. It was at, it was at about 24 levels. Uh, and we said, nope, it's targeting down to 13. So people were like, no, that coin's not going to go more than half down. In fact, we got overperformance to that. And we expected to trade below the 13s. It ended up trading sub 10 and 9s. So something that was, you know, at 24, and I'm talking about X amount of digitary spaces behind it. I'm not giving you all the zeros. It, it lost 65% of its value. And that was being able to recognize it. We'd ridden it. It had run well. We got out of it. We could change into another coin. Most people don't have that ability to do the relative assessment and to recognize when something's going to fall and underperform relative to other things. And just keeping yourself in the group of lead steers of the moment, because they all have a little turn to run as well. The problem is, is if you just chase, you're always getting in just after something's run, yeah. hoping that it'll go a little further. That's often when it needs a rest and it'll sell off. Um, and that's what I call a momentum chasers uh, fallacy, where everybody wants the certainty of the move, but wants it to happen first and then seeks to be in it. Well, of course, you don't, you don't get the price execution of it. This is the human brain not yet accepting that you don't control the outcome. Um, and they want the certainty of the event, but then you end up paying the full price for it and you don't get the appreciation. And you're probably due a rest, um, which means they often buy the, the resting dip after a major move.